It's 1957. The U.S. and the Soviet Union are deadlocked in the Cold War. U.S. leadership is relying on our technological superiority to maintain world domination. Then, on October 4th, the Soviet Union launches Sputnik. This little satellite symbolizes an existential threat to the United States, the first man-made object to leave the Earth's atmosphere. As the rocket tra traverses the orbit of the Earth, the military-industrial complex goes into hyperdrive. The arms race accelerates, the space race accelerates, NASA is started, DARPA is started. Millions and billions of dollars are going into the U.S.'s defense posture. Americans around the country, including my mom and her father, wake up in the middle of the night to watch this miraculous satellite traverse the sky. Outside of Baltimore, two scientists are doing the same thing. As they're observing the heavens and watching Sputnik fly, they realize if they measure from multiple points, they can tell precisely where Sputnik is and where it's going. They quickly realize the inverse is also true. If there are multiple points in the sky with direct eye line to a point on Earth and precise atomic clocks, so they're all looking at the same point at the same time, we have triangulation. This is the foundation of GPS. I'm going to guess 99.9% .9 of you have a GPS in your pocket, in your purse, in your backpack. Even my puppy has one around her neck, so when she escapes the yard, I know where she's gone. This ubiquitous technology is the result of approximately $5 billion of taxpayer funding for research and development, and over 58 years of just time for researchers and scientists and engineers to do the work they needed to do to get us to GPS. So how did this happen? How did we all end up with this little economic driver in our pocket? Our economy benefits in the, to the tune of 98 billion, with a B, dollars a year from this technology. So how did we get from a couple of nerds observing outside in the fields to this technology? Well, it takes an ecosystem. And what do I mean by ecosystem? This is my favorite, one of my favorite ecosystems. This is the Olympic National Forest. Everybody take a deep breath. Can you smell the pitch? Can you feel the moisture on your arms? If you move too quickly, you might catch a spider web. So this forest is an ecosystem. And like the forest, our technology ecosystem requires many things to work in concert. We have, in the forest, seeds. In our technology ecosystem, those seeds are ideas. Some ideas will fall and land in a fertile place and grow into the maples, the pines, the trees that, that fill our forest. Others will fall, and the conditions won't be quite right for them to germinate. And they'll, they'll wait in the soil until the conditions change. And for ideas, that can be decades, generations, for the idea to become relevant to the context that we're living in. Other ideas will sprout, look around, they won't get what they need, and they'll die. And they'll return to the soil and become the fertilizer for the next idea. In addition, we have pollinators. We have bears and bees, and we have beavers who are going to build things. These are our scientists and our engineers in our technology ecosystem. Another important component that we often don't think about are the entrepreneurs, the CEOs, the people who can make eye contact and pitch ideas, those are important too. And that's part of our ecosystem, our technology ecosystem. Finally, we need water. Nothing is going to grow without water. And water is really the leadership in our technology ecosystem. The leaders who can see for the long term that it may take 10, 20, 30, 50 years to get from your observation to a technology that everyone can use. Those that are willing to stand up and defend funding that doesn't have an immediate uh, outcome, that will not show progress in their four-year political cycle. 
And it takes all of you being willing to continue to support those leaders with your taxes. So remember that you're playing a really important role when you pay your taxes, which I'm sure you all do, um, in our science and technology ecosystem. So why is this exciting? Why are we talking about this at a Salt Lake TEDx? This, my friends, is your Utah technology ecosystem. Utah has a fabulous technology ecosystem and a long history of success. Adobe started here, and thank you to them for the technology. Pixar started here. Even the television was invented here. Think about the television and how that's changed society. Not just technology, how we get news, how we used to get news. And it continues to grow and seed and expand. In 2006, the legislature here in Utah, as well as the governor, put their weight behind a really novel, innovative, and progressive initiative. USTAR, the Utah Science, Technology, and Research Agency. USTAR's goal is to be the technology catalyst for the state, to expand our technology ecosystem and stimulate as much of that old wood growth as we can. So, all of these are parts. The government can't do anything by itself, but we need our partners in the private sector, and we have those in Utah. We have a great ecosystem that's working in collaboration to move ideas from observations out into the market and changing the way we all live and function. So what's an example? I'm going to talk today about the way of bus. Hopefully, some of you have seen it here on campus. You're not going to hear it because it's silent, it's an all-electric bus that doesn't need to be plugged in. It's completely wireless. This is technology that was born here in Utah, that's been raised here in Utah, and is starting to propagate out across the country. And so how did this happen? How did our ecosystem create this new technology? So it took a village. It took the whole ecosystem to support this technology. So USTAR helped to recruit this young Doogie Hauser of an electrical engineer, Hunter Wu. He came to Utah in 2010 as a professor at Utah State University. His research produced this psychedelic-looking battery that you see on the slide. This, these two pads, one's attached to the bus, one's embedded in the pavement, allow for transduction of electric charge without any wires, anything. So the bus drives over the pad, takes on passengers, and while it's taking on its passengers, the charge is happening. You can also dance on it, and you won't get electrocuted. There are no problems with that. So this technology, out of, the, out of Utah State University, licensed to a company, using other funding from the state, from the Governor's Office of Economic Development, federal funding from the Transportation Agency, they were able to hire a CEO and a business development guy and about 30 engineers. All those engineers sit right here in Salt Lake. They're out by the airport. They have a great facility where they're manufacturing this technology and installing it on buses, upcycling the bus. So all of this ecosystem was required to create this. And while this idea is continuing to grow and thrive, and we're starting to see these buses all the way from Maryland to California. What's exciting is, what's the next idea? What's the next seed that's growing at Utah State? And the idea there, which is much further down the pike, is can you shrink this technology so it can go in your car? So you can have an all-electric car that doesn't need to plug in. And then let's take it one step further, and instead of having a pad in your driveway, can we embed the pads in the highway system, and you can charge them in motion. 55 miles an hour going across the country. You never have to stop for gas. Think about the environmental impact, the economic impact. This could be a game changer. And you're all part of this if you're paying taxes in Utah. <laughs> so as these ideas grow, you need to ask yourself, what's my role in the ecosystem? Sputnik stimulated a ubiquitous technology of GPS. It was in response to fear, aggression. The economy here in Utah, our technology ecosystem, is one of excitement, of promise. How are we going to change the world for the positive? 
And what's your role? You can stay just a taxpayer, and we love you for it. You can join an entrepreneurial group. You can become a scientist. You can make your kid become an engineer. All of these are the parts that we need in order to have a continuing and healthy ecosystem here in Utah. So please think about what's your role? What part of this exciting program do you want to be? And how are you going to contribute to the technology ecosystem here in Utah? Thank you.